rolling them back out with another pair. These are a, par a pair of Mark McNary's that we're gonna be tearing off this plantation crepe sole and we're gonna be putting on a red day night, which is gonna be pretty cool. So come join us, check it out, and we're gonna see what's going on inside of these boots because I can't remember if I've worked on a pair, especially just like this. At Mark McNary I've worked on, but not like this, I don't recall. So it's gonna be interesting to see what's going on internally. And uh, I've already a few ideas of what might be going on. So let's see if my prediction is gonna be right. All right, everyone, so we're gonna start out by breaking these down. And so kind of my prediction is going to be, I'll give you guys an idea and we'll see if I'm right or wrong. But uh, from the look of it, it looks like this sole here is in two pieces. You might be able to see that faint line. So it looks like part of the plantation crepe is actually acting as a midsole that is stitched on to a leather midsole possibly. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but it almost looks like these are a Blake rapid stitch, but I could be wrong. It could be actually even a Goodyear welted model, but uh, I got to first take off the main layer of soling and then get to the one that's acting as the midsole on here. So plantation crepe is probably the worst material to work on for cobblers. It's, it's nice and durable a lot of times, but it's very sticky in some cases. Sometimes it has that chemical reaction where it becomes very sticky and everything. And then other times, it just rips, like in this case here, it's just kind of ripping a little bit as I'm using pliers on it. So I have to be careful not to apply too much pressure to the pliers themselves and just go for it. So we can definitely see that that other piece right here is acting like a midsole and is stitched on. Alright everyone, so at first I was trying to peel off this piece here, but it's just too much of a hassle because that rubber wants to stretch or rip way too much, so I decided to go ahead and just slice it like we normally would with soles. It just takes a little bit of effort in other words, but not terribly um, a problem necessarily. It's just have to pull it back, cut a couple of stitches on one side, pull it back again, go to the other side, and just back and forth, so it takes, it takes a little bit of effort to to keep it going but it looks like yeah these are good you're welted um they're not a blake rapid stitch it's just from the way that the stitches were laid out on it and the way everything looked it, they really look like they were blake rapid stitched um and what Blake Rapid Stitch means is that instead of having this Goodyear welt around it, you would have a full sole that's stitched to the boot, going inside of the boot and everything. And that means so you'd be able to see the stitches usually on the inside here. Sometimes they're actually covered up with maybe like a layer of leather or insole of some sort. And that was that was one possibility that I thought was an option with these. But yeah, it looks like they're just straight Goodyear welted. So it makes it actually surprisingly a little bit easier to work with because if uh, if I need to replace the cork like in this case I can so with a Blake rapid stitch usually there's no cork involved or anything like that and you know maybe just a little bit every now and then just at the ball of the foot and stuff so sometimes a little more things to keep out keep an eye out for with a Blake rapid stitch design except it's uh, no fun right now just because this boot is on the softer side, so on the last it's wanted to shift around a little more than I'd like it to. And the sole is very soft. Look at that. I actually just ripped while I'm trying to hold this open. I have to improvise and go back and forth between these guys and the other pliers over and over. 
I can get a good enough grip. And then the other thing is just going through with the knife on its own all the way around. It doesn't always work because this rubber is so grippy that it just doesn't want to slide through as well as I'd want it to. Let's see, right there. It takes a it takes a little bit. But I might be able to this last little bit. Alright, so I'm going to finish taking this apart the rest of the way, just in case if I cut myself, I don't want that on video. And uh, we'll be back in a second. So we've got the sole off and everything, and it's definitely a great rubber to have for a sole, but there's a little bit of a dilemma that sometimes when it has that chemical reaction, it could be a number of things that go wrong with these plantation crepe soles. Um, they can have a chemical reaction where they become extra sticky, and so everything just sticks to it, and you know, there's not much that could be done to prevent that from happening. In some cases, it just varies from plantation crepe sheets to plantation crepe sheets, in other words. And it does look like they use a wooden shank and this one's pretty cool i kind of want to get it out it doesn't look busted but i want to be able to get it out for you to take a look at usually i try not messing with the wooden ones too much if they're stuck in there pretty good make sure to get all that cork out of there and everything but check carefully there we go there we go so you can see right here, which is kind of nice, that these are actually shaped and molded and everything um, in a nice way where they're just chiseled out, good smooth edges and everything. So that's a nice little finishing touch that nobody sees or appreciates, but I appreciate it when I take a shoe apart and I see that they take that little bit of extra time and effort on some, some things. And then we definitely have that plastic it looks like in here. I'll show you real quick. So this plastic is put on before even the welt is stitched on to cover and protect the uppers. I guess I can't really rip it out, but there we go. This plastic will go over top of the boot like that to protect the whole upper. And it's sometimes tucked in, well, most of the time it's tucked under, underneath the welt before it gets stitched on. So when they're stitching it, they stitch clear through the welt. So if you ever come across a little piece of plastic somewhere sticking out on the edge here, whether it's a boot like this or, you know, $200 pair of boots or a $2,000 pair of boots. If you find that little bit of plastic, it's normal. Just grab some little needle nose pliers or whatever you can and just yank it out. It's not going to cause any kind of harm or damage to the boots. It's just there that during the manufacturing process, they have that plastic there sometimes to protect those uppers and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and take apart the other one and everything. And then we're going to go through and pull all those old stitches and everything and continue on.
All right, everyone. So I did go ahead and uh, finish up the edging. So I just put a neutral on there around the edges, kind of brightens it up because we're keeping a neutral color and everything. Um, kind of brushed them over. So I'll shoot like this uh, because it's um, a wool. In other words, if you're ever wondering, as far as um, you know, basic maintenance on it. Honestly, you don't want to use a nylon or a steel brush or anything unless it's a really soft nylon brush to kind of brush it off. Otherwise, a horsehair brush will work phenomenally just to get a little dust and everything off of that. A full treatment, usually, if you're needing it like cleaned up and everything, it's a little bit more of a process than something that I can just recommend for people to do themselves. But otherwise, this is a pair of Mark McNary's getting a day night so as as you can tell we're at a different location we're kind of in that process of moving and everything while these were apart and stuff so ended up being kind of a crazy scenario in other words and stuff but we're at a new location now which is great so there you go i like it with that red look with that red sole and everything and neutral edging but uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you're wanting a resole like this done, I'll leave a link in the description down below to our day-night recraft options and everything. You can check those out. There are other options you can have added on, like a midsole, different colors of thread, especially if you do the build your own options and everything. But uh, overall, these shoes, um, they're, they're pretty nice, I would say. You know, for the price point and everything, I, I like them. I, I might go through with them if I was to get me a pair or something, but... I probably wouldn't just because I, I just destroyed that upper real bad. But otherwise, um, yeah, make sure you subscribe. I want to see if I have enough time to do a Cash or Trash episode. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description as well for that. Uh, hopefully I have enough time for the um, Cash or Trash on that uh, before the gentleman comes by to grab these. Uh, otherwise, if not, I do apologize. Overall, I think these are a great shoe for, or a boot for the price point and everything. Probably, I would say, worth it. Um, even if it's got that gum sole on there, that is a little bit of a downside for me personally just because that gum sole is durable and grippy. However, once it starts to break down, it gets nasty, like really sticky and everything, and everything sticks to it. So it just as a full heads up with that uh, plantation crepe sole that it comes with and everything. Otherwise, uh, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell icon, and we'll see you next time.